Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. I hope you are enjoying the Docker series and if you are enjoying it, hit that subscribe button and share it with your friends as well. Moving forward, we in the previous video, we got a Docker file. It is up here with just two lines of code from and run. So what is going on and especially the reason for this video is to discuss what is going on up here. So these lines are absolutely crucial and it is very important that we understand that. Now one concept that you have to remember throughout this video is that every single line, whenever a new line comes up and do in that new line, the Docker actually creates a new separate container and that container is used every single time. You'll understand that more in just a second. Just wait for a minute. So just to prove the point, it says that whenever I said that from Alpine, a new Docker was created up here. Now, whenever you first actually install an OS, only that moment uh, a new container is not created, but rest of all, all the new container is created. So whenever I said run apk add bin utils, means I wanted to add a program, it says running in, and this is a new container which is being created. Now inside this new container, whenever I was finished installing this and I have executed that, then it says removing intermediate container this with this ID and this exact ID is up at the top. So a new intermediate or a, term, a temporary container is being created all the time. So let's see visually that how these things are going on. So we have got a Docker file and this Docker file, there are some set of instructions. These instructions are always uh, written in the caps. So from run command volume, expose a lot of these which we are going to learn over the time so these are commands and after that there are some parameters or options what we really want to do so these set of instruction are being passed on to docker cli we saw that here that these are passed on to docker client and docker client try to run it and create an image the custom image which is denoted up here is initially empty so first and foremost what it's going to do is it's going to take a, a copy of operating system from wherever we have asked ubuntu or alpine or whatever and it's going to just deploy in up here so that's your step number one so let's just shrink this a little bit so that we can understand it now we have asked it to install a program so in the step number two it's going to create a temporary container now whatever the files exist inside my custom image right now just operating system it's going to take that file and will create a temporary container from it Okay, there we go, temporary container being created. Now I've asked it to install a program on it. So that program will be first installed onto the temporary container. So this is gonna be copied first and will be put up inside the temporary container. Now, if all the things are going great, now then what is going to happen, this Docker is going to come up and will replace the existing file. So this is going to be removed and it will be replaced by these two guys. So there we go. We go ahead and just place it there. So this is my custom image now. And after that, since this temporary container is of no use, it is going to be just deleted. It's technically not being deleted, but as of now, we can assume that it is deleted. There is a lot going on in here. And when we move on to the concept of caching, we will understand what's happening with this temporary container. Right now, it's okay to assume that it's being deleted. So this is the very first thing that we are doing. But let's add one more step into the Docker file, a fictitious step, and try to understand what's going to happen if something more happens. So let's just say there is another line in my Docker file that says uh, run APK and then some program. Now this is of course a fictitious program and we are not much worried about what program it's trying to install. What is going to happen at that point of time? So we want to install some program and that some program is here. So in that case also, again, a temporary container is gonna be created and we're gonna just pick up our existing images. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just make a copy of this. We'll bring up, oops, that's not an exact copy. I would like to copy this entirely. So we're gonna make a copy of this. So there we go, hopefully this time, there we go. So we are making an exact copy of this program again. And once we have got the copy of this, then a container is being created then this new program is again going to be installed from wherever you want to have and we're going to shrink that a little bit and now what is going to happen 
a new container is created so your existing image will be updated so let's remove all of this and technically this all will go up there so there we go this is what we have got as an as an update and after that this will also be removed there we go so do you really want to say that hey Tish, are you saying that every time a new instruction is being loaded in the docker file means we're going to create a temporary container and we'll execute everything in there yes you got it exactly right let's see and validate this as well one more time and now you'll be able to understand that first and foremost it says hey i'm building a context uh, of this and from alpine so there we go no problem in that first time it executes and install the os pretty nice and easily from an existing image then it says, hey, I want to run this APK for bin utils. That means I should be running it inside a container. So there we go. A new container is being created. Fetching all the things means it's downloading this Alpine Linux and all these stuffs from here. And then it says, once I'm done with that, I'm removing the intermediate container and this. And then it says successfully built. Now a successful a custom image is being built. So if I just copy this and I just move up here. So this, my custom image is actually this image. So, and uh, there we go. Looks like there is some issue. Let me just fix that. There we go, we're gonna remove that. So there we go, and this is my custom image. So technically this is what it's saying at the final end, this image is creating. We don't have to worry anything about this, what is happening in the temporary or anything. As of now, later on it's gonna be used. So this is my final image and I can use this for whatever the purpose I want to use it. So this is a very basic stuff, what's going on in here. Now it's time that we make it a little bit complex and we see these steps running over and over again. So we're gonna see a lot of temporary containers being created. One more thing I want to point your attention to this is that I wanted to install this bin utils and my Alpine Linux was already aware that I have to fetch this from this URL which is download CDN of this Alpine Linux slash something something. So what is the case if your OS doesn't know from where should I look up my file? We're gonna fix that as well. We're gonna first introduce this as an error and then we're gonna see that how we can actually do that and uh, stuff like that. But again, this is gonna be a very, very crucial thing. Okay, so I hope now the things and behind the scene working of a custom image is all clear to you. Now that is all clear to you, we can move ahead and go to this uh, Docker file again. We're gonna make some changes in editing on that in the next video and we'll create a customized image of MongoDB in the next video. So that's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next one.